Good morning and welcome back to week three of august uh this is going to be a weekly market outlook for the 14th to 18th of august 2023 my name is video in general let's get this started with a quick promo code that you can use it's video ma23 it is valid until the 31st of december 2023 this is to double your deposit bonus all right let's do a quick recap of last week a really quick one uh, because we don't actually see a lot of market movement up until the release of the u.s inflation number now, let's break down the u.s inflation number here uh, this is the first time in 13 months that we actually see inflation picked up in the u.s all right so we've been looking at inflation dropping down from 8.5 percent to all the way down to three percent uh basically throughout the past 13 months and uh, this is the first time it actually picked back up uh, although it is still below the consensus of 3.3 percent uh, we got 3.2 percent it is still an increase of 0.2 percent regardless of what people say regardless of what the consensus says it is still an increase in inflation number in the u.s the core inflation dropped down uh, from 4.8 percent to 4.7 percent now the consensus does say it's 4.8 percent but earlier consensus was actually 4.7 percent so we don't actually see a lot of um, impact on the market based on the core inflation number the uh, the drop is just way too small for it to be of any significance uh the monthly growth rate all per consensus it all remains the same as the previous month at 0.2 percent growth rate both for the core cpi as well as the monthly cpi numbers but again headline inflation picked up from three percent to 3.2 percent now obviously it doesn't end there because the next day we've got the ppi numbers coming up from the us the growth rate again for the ppi Previous one with, uh, was at 0%. Expected consensus was 0.2% growth. We saw a 0.3% growth on the PPI. So both these data is combined, both on the consumer side as well as on the producer side, does indicate inflation picking up again in the US. So sentiment has shifted again. And that was basically the concern that I had from the outlook on the previous week that the market wasn't pricing it well properly. Uh, we have that surprisingly confusing NFP numbers, uh, which is actually a still, still a good uh, NFP numbers. And then in addition to that, we've got this CPI or the inflation picking up in the US. Obviously, the sentiment is going to shift uh, towards the US dollar there. Um, you know, people are just considering that, you know, maybe the FOMC needs to do a little bit more, which is something that we're going to be waiting for this week in terms of an insight into that. So let's take a look at the news of this week. We've got the Japanese GDP number. Nothing major uh, coming up from the Japanese GDP number on Tuesday. Um, on Monday, it's pretty empty. Okay, on Monday, we don't actually have a lot. On Tuesday, that's where it starts with the Japanese GDP numbers. I don't think this one here is going to have a huge impact into the market. Uh, but then the RBA meeting minutes is going to get released. I think the tone is still going to be the same. It's still going to be a neutral dovish tone. And then we have the Chinese industrial production. Obviously, the RBA and the Chinese industrial production is going to affect the Australian dollar significantly, uh, but the Chinese industrial production is likely going to move the US oil as well as uh, brand crude oil as well. Okay, so just keep that in mind on Tuesday. We've got the Canadian inflation numbers again looking very similar to the US inflation numbers, it's likely going to pick up from 2.8% to 3%. Uh, retail sales is expected to grow in the US from 0.2% to 0.4% monthly growth on the, um, the US retail sales sites. And then on Wednesday, we've got the UK inflation number. Uh, just a little bit of a note here. The number was from a drop from 7.9% to 6.8%. This is 1.1%. I don't know if the UK inflation is going to drop that much. So don't put too much on, you know, expecting the consensus to be reached. I think we might actually see... Um, uh, CPI is coming at maybe 7%, 7.1% or so up to 7.2%. If we see that drop, it uh, might not be as significant as 1.1%, but you know the consensus does indicate uh, a drop to 1.1%. And then we've got the FOMC meeting minutes. Again, this is from the previous meeting, uh, but again, uh, people are just going to be combing through the facts here and see if there's any hawkish comment or hawkish notes coming out from the FOMC meeting minutes, which is um, the previous one. 
But um, that's pretty much it. We are not really expecting a FOMC decision this month. We're expecting that next month. And, you know, before that happens, obviously, we have a new NFP numbers. We've got a new CPI numbers. But again, you know, people are just going to comb through the FOMC meeting minutes looking for signs of any hawkishness or dovishness in the previous meeting minutes. But we've got the numbers. We've got the inflation number. We've got the job numbers. Uh, the job number is pretty strong. Inflation has picked up for the first time in 13 months. Obviously, that's going to be of certain uh, importance, right? And then on Friday, we've got the Japanese inflation numbers. Uh, we don't have the consensus as of yet, but the forecast does point to an increase to 3.4%. Previous number was at 3.3%, uh, expecting a forecast coming at 3.4%. And then we finish off the week with the UK retail sales number, uh, expecting to shrink a little bit. From 0.7% to negative 0.5%, that is pretty much the consensus for the UK retail sales number. All right, let's just jump in onto the technicals. So, you know, a couple of things has been sorted out. Last week on Monday, I was a little bit worried because we were slightly below the Ishimoku Club for the dollar index there. Uh, and then the momentum was like, you know, potentially about to shift into an overbought territory. Uh, we didn't see that. The uh, the stochastics never crossed below 80, so we don't have an overbought condition. Uh, and then the dollar index picked up uh, and moved away from 102.50. Right now, it's closer to about 103. It is at pretty much at 103 at this point in time. So we have moved away from that range. And is there room for this one to transition further? Yes, if there's a daily close above the Ichimoku cloud, which is where... Uh, it is at its thinnest uh, the next two days, uh, right? If we, we if we are able to maintain a position above 103 on the dollar index, then we're likely going to be looking at further progress for the US dollar going forward. Uh, might see a little bit of a pullback, but pullback is likely going to be well to put at 102, 10250 for the dollar index. So let's keep an eye out on the dollar index right now. This one here has a resistance at 10350. So might track higher first uh, before we see any further corrections, or it might actually correct itself towards 10250 but yeah that's to be seen but in terms of from a technical standpoint um we basically don't have an overbought condition this one might continue to push higher for the dollar index okay so moving on to the aussie usd uh, last week we mentioned the formation of a double top pretty much at 69 cents breaking the neckline at 66 cents uh what the movement from last week basically just confirmed the retest of 66 cents and we see further progress to the downside uh, We've been saying, we've been anticipating that drop lowered closer to about 64 cents. This one here is still on track for that move towards 161.8%. At 0 0.6416, uh, we're looking at 64 cents as a stronger support. If you take a look at the weekly pivot, the support too is located at 64 cents. So that's where we're anticipating support to build up for the Aussie USD. But until that happens, we're still anticipating further drops from the Aussie USD. Uh, the euro usd is up next and as, as i mentioned from the previous outlook we're ex expecting a little bit more for range one market condition that's basically what we get uh we're basically trapped between 78.6 and 61.8 percent which is uh 1.0925 to 1.10 and that's pretty much the range we did spike out a little bit towards 1.105 on the release of the um the US CPI numbers, but it quickly reverted back. Momentum wise, this one here is likely going to test 1.09 and 1.0850. Um, that is actually going to be a strong, significant support for the euro. You can see this highlighted as pretty much the support for uh, the year. Uh, and that's basically a contested region for the euro USD. So we're anticipating that level to come into play again. We're not anticipating a reversal until we see that break below 1.085. But if we do see that daily close below 1.085, then we're likely going to track further losses on the euro USD potentially towards 1.07. So. Uh, keep in mind for this week, the range is still going to be intact. We're still looking at 1.10 as a resistance. We're still looking at 1.09 as a support. Um, again, if we lose at 1.09, that's also an indication that we might actually transition below the Ichimoku cloud. This is the next few days. It's going to be critical because uh, until Friday, that's where the thinnest part on the euro USD here. So the price could remain in a sideways market condition. It will still transition below the Ichimoku cloud. So it'll be interesting to see how the euro USD plays out. But right now, 
we don't actually have a short term definite trend on the euro usd this one this one here is like a good remain range bound so if you're trading the euro usd just make sure you're trading within the range that we have here on the euro usd the pound usd we mentioned in the previous outlook you know this is this could be in a sideways market condition that's basically what we got uh, we see price spike all the way up to 1.28 but really it's pretty much contained it by 1.27 and we're still you know uh, we see see price moving back and forth around 1.27. Now the concern that I have from last week was this: if this remains sideways, and we can see with the arrows that I've drawn here, this was actually drawn since last week. Um, we could slowly transition below the Ichimoku cloud, and that would be the concern. So it doesn't have to dip down significantly. In fact, it would remain flat as long as it remains flat. It will transition below the Ichimoku cloud and that should be a concern because if we do transition below the Ichimoku cloud um, we only have 1.26 as a support level and then below that uh, 1.25 might actually not it might actually not hold uh, as a strong support we might actually see a dip down lower towards 1.24 which is where the 127.2 percent is also located uh, also, if we take a look at the price movement here, the resistance to the upside is actually smaller. It's actually much slower, uh, smaller than the support to the downside. So, uh, weekly pivot is located pretty much at about 1.2720. Uh, resistance one very close to 1.28, uh, and the resistance two is a little bit higher, closer to 1.29. But you know, w considering what it is, un unless we have a much hotter inflation number coming out from the UK. I don't think that's going to be enough momentum to be able to lift um, the pound USD up. So again, the decision would come in from the UK inflation number to kind of shift the sentiments around. But from a technical standpoint, this is flat. This one here is re uh, remains in a sideways market condition. If you're going to be trading this, just make sure you know the key levels. Uh, it's not actually hard. We got support at 1.26, pivot at 1.27, resistance at 1.28 for the pound USD. All right. Next up is the Dow Japanese. And we always mentioned this is going to be, uh, this is always going to come back to 145. We basically got that um, price is pretty much at 145. A lot of long traders are getting out of their positions. That's why we're looking at a little bit of a pause as price approaches 145. Now, obviously, there's going to be a few concerns, right? Now, obviously, the number one concern would be whether or not the Ministry of Finance in Japan and the Bank of Japan is going to intervene into market at 145. Uh, 145 is also the projected return from you know those traders that picked it up at 137, 138. So it's been a good run uh, for those position traders and we can see the um the levels here at 145 it is struggling a little bit all right we just don't have enough volume at this point in time so uh obviously there's going to be a couple of scenarios here <clears throat> from a daily perspective we still have momentum above 80 still pointing to the upside so if the if there's a daily close above 145 then the next movement would be towards 146 and 147 um the intraday scale on an intraday scale on the early chart uh you know if price is reacting neutral at 145 then we are likely going to be seeing momentum being reset at the hourly um level right we're looking at the hourly level at this point in time you can see how price is actually flat and the momentum is kind of resetting itself so we'll see what happens here whether or not there's actually going to be demand around that 145 or there's actually a little bit more selling at 145 but if the alley on Monday uh, transition into a reset, right, uh, we're likely going to see, you know, buyers coming in and start pushing price away from 145. If you want it to be on a safer side, then then just wait for the daily close above 145. If there's that daily close above 145, then we're likely going to be seeing more buyers picking it up uh, towards 146, 147. I think the cutoff would be about 145.50. Uh, if we see that progress beyond 145.50, then I think we are going to be looking at that movement towards 146, 147 on the dollar Japanese yen. All right, just the last one before we go off would be on gold. And gold has been something that I've been uh, pretty much saying that, look, if the inflation picked up, uh, FOMC still have more room to go. I don't think there's any 
you know, positive um, side on golds here. Right now, this one here is being pressured to the downside. Very close to strong support at 1900. So we'll see what the reaction is at 1900. If you take a look at the pivot, uh, it is located, a weekly pivot is located in 1923 to about 1925. In terms of support one, it is located at 1900. So once price goes down to 1900, that's where we see um, support starting to build up because the difference between support one and support two, we don't see a lot of move uh, room here. It's only about 13 bucks for from support one to support two. So we're anticipating uh, support to come in at 1900. But again, if we lose that uh, 1900 level, uh, this could happen if the FOMC meeting minutes points to more on the hawkish side. And we, it's easy for us to actually lose that 1900 um, support at this point in time. Um, definitely not looking for any uh, bullish um, trades on gold at this point in time. It's just way pressured to the downside. We can see the pullback to test the Ishimoku cloud remains within the Ishimoku cloud throughout the month of July and we basically just transition out of it again so I think from uh, projections wise we could be anticipating a little bit more of a push lower again 1900 is going to be uh, one level to watch out for but below 1900 we actually don't have a lot until about 1875 and potentially 1850 um, so just keep that in mind it might slow down a little bit because the stochastics there does point out um, that the market do need a little bit of uh, correction but you know for as long as it's below 20 we might actually see the drop speed up as well but again um, sentiment wise really kind of key to watch out for what the market is thinking about uh, what the FOMC is likely going to be doing in September all right so that's pretty much it for this week good luck with your trades and I'll see you soon <music>